Hey, good morning, it's Tom Christie, and I'm doing a little painting on a Drake Mallard. And I like to airbrush this area just on top of the side pocket and back to those tertials. And I'm using brown earth first, and then darkening the lower edge of that with burnt umber. And I'm using Joe Sonia colors, and I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, airbrushing because I don't do it a lot. I'm not the airbrush expert. I'll be the first to admit that. I use the airbrush sparingly. I like to brush paint uh, because I'm lazy. I don't like the cleaning process and the, the care of the airbrush and it plugs up so often. Uh, and I'm sure there are airbrush specialists that would have a lot better tips than I have. But I did want to talk about uh, mixing paint this morning. I don't mix in the airbrush cup because that has a tendency to clog up the airbrush. So I have these little plastic cups and I mix offline. And one of the big questions I've had is how do I know when my mix is right and it's going to perform well in the airbrush? And it's kind of been trial and error for me, but uh, this morning I was working on this and I thought it's worth putting a a tip video together. Um, I'm going to come back and do some close-ups on what I'm talking about here in just a second. Okay, here's the uh, close-up shot. I've got two cups here, one with what I think is the proper mix and one that is too thin. And the, the battle is always getting it too thick, which is going to plug up your brush your airbrush too thin it's uh it's going to be too watery and spatter and spit and so finding that uh, middle ground is key and what i've been this is a royal crafters choice cheap brush that i use for scrubbing i've described those in the past but they have a light blue plastic handle and i use that handle to mix the the burnt umber paint and uh, then I use a a dropper you can buy these at Dick Blick's or anywhere to add water to the mix in a controlled manner and then use the brush to mix up the paint to get all that pigment spread evenly throughout the the solution one thing I've noticed and you may not find this help at, helpful at all, but it's been helpful for me, is if my mix is too thin, it comes right off the, the end of the brush and does not coat that plastic at all. That tells me, okay, see, so it's sheeting right off of the brush, as opposed to when I get my mix the way I think it should be, it stays on the brush a little more. This is not scientific, I, I grant you, but it's just a way that you can use as you're mixing your airbrush paints offline in cups to determine, you know, is your mix right and ready for the airbrush? If this is too thick, it is gonna stick on here. So it's just kind of a visual gauge through experience that I think is helpful, and maybe you can use that to help you mix your airbrush paints. If you have better ideas, please leave me a comment, because um, I'd love to hear it. Again, I'm not a, an experienced airbrush person. Uh, I use it sparingly, but I, this has been helpful for me, and I thought I'd pass that along. Of course, the real test and gauge of whether your mix is correct is the airbrush itself. And I use a target piece of paper. I just like to make sure I know how it's spraying before I go to the decoy. So if the paint is too thick, it's going to splatter or not come out at all. If it's too thin, it's going to run. I just found that pre-mixing and that little test that I described helped me hit it more often so I don't have to go back, remix, and redo after the fact. Just a quick video this morning, but as I was uh, painting this mallard, it occurred to me that this might be helpful to talk about. 
And uh, again, leave me comments if you've got a surefire way of getting your mix correct on your airbrush paints. I'd appreciate I can learn from you. And uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you're enjoying the channel. And I appreciate it. Talk to you later.